Welcome. Excited that you're here. I'm going to give the band and Josh a minute to do his thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, welcome. Listen, for those of you that have come back, um, thank you. Um, I know. So we are continuing in our series titled Under Construction, where we're looking at this big theological word called sanctification, which is the process, for those of us that have said yes to a relationship with Jesus, it's the process of you and I becoming more like Jesus. And we looked at the big idea last week of to experience God's best, we need to run from our mess, which talks about, listen, if we're in a position of like, yes, we want to experience all that God has for us, we need to be an active part of the process of cleansing out our lives, allowing the Holy Spirit to convict us of what are the areas of my life that I need to let go of in order for us to be an honorable vessel for God. You see, God has not called us to live an average life. God has called us to live an abundant life. And I talked to so many of you last week who were like, yes, Graham, 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 I am ready to experience God's best for me, right? I'm ready to do that, and and I'm praying to the Holy Spirit, God, what are the areas of my life that I need to let go of and move on from? But what are the tools that God has given us in order to kind of live out this process of, of becoming more like Jesus, this process of being under construction. Um, Heather and I recently purchased a house. For those of you that either just got done, are in, or have gotten out of a home buying process recently, um, I'm praying for you. I have more gray hair now than I did before. Man, stress is not a word that I like, but um, God was so gracious to us. But as we've been in this process, people have been telling me, Graham, Graham, when you buy a house, you need to fill it with stuff. I hate stuff, but apparently this is what you do. <laughs> so as we were doing that, it reminded me of a memory of Heather and I, our first little apartment. We had recently got married, and we did the newlywed thing. We made the epic voyage up to Ikea. Yes. How many of you have ever purchased Ikea furniture Yeah, a few. If it brings emotions to you of dread and frustration, I get it. I was there. So we were at Ikea. We're kind of shopping around for, you know, cool pieces of furniture. And Heather finds her dream, her dream dresser. And so here's the first clue to me that this process was going to be awful. Um, The furniture came in multiple boxes. When anything comes in multiple boxes, just run the opposite direction. So we got a few other things. We came home, and I kind of put together the small things really quickly, right, to get the easy stuff out of the way. And I took all these boxes for the dresser, and I kind of stacked them in the corner. And I said I'd get to it later. And, um, well, a few weeks went by, and Heather suggested, not nagged, suggested (laughs) that the time come that I put together this furniture. So I kind of took the morning off and I unpacked everything, the bolts and the screws and all the wood, and um, I laid it out. And what I did is I kind of picked up the instruction manual. I kind of leafed through it, you know, kind of scanned it, you know, step one, step two, three. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense, right? Things, yeah, whatever. So I was like, I don't really need this. I'm going to do it the manly way. (laughs) So, so started this process of me building this furniture. Now, this is a picture of what it was like for me to build. Yeah. I got close to the end, and what I started to realize was um, I had far, far too many screws left. And as I started to kind of put the the drawers uh, into the dresser, uh, it just wasn't fitting. And I just kind of rolled up into a ball of frustration of like, this is not working. So what I ended up having to do is I had to take the entire dresser apart. Then I had to go back to the manual and go step by step by step in order to put this dresser together. Now, my guess is that if you're sitting there and you're watching line, someone got an elbow like, yeah, yeah, remember when you did that? Yeah, yeah. But here's the reality. We do the same thing when it comes to our Christian life. We do the same thing that God has given us the Bible as a manual, as a blueprint for us to to grow in our relationship and to grow in the knowledge of our salvation and for us to have a blueprint of how we're supposed to live 
this Christian life, a Christian life, not just an average Christian life, but a life that is glorifying to God. Now, when I look at my own life, and when I've talked to people, there's normally a couple reasons why we kind of put the Bible to the side, right? We don't reference the blueprint. The, the first reason is this, is we're confused, right? We, we've got the Bible, and we, got a, we think we got a good translation, and we've downloaded the Bible app, and, and we've kind of jumped in, and, and then we get to this book called Leviticus, and there's just words, I, I don't even know how to pronounce that, and then there's something about a giant fish, and a rain floods, and a donkey, I it's just too confusing to me. The, 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 the concepts, I just don't understand. And instead of asking questions and instead of diving in or joining a life group or something, we just simply close the book. Some of us are confused because maybe we have a school teacher or a professor or a family member or a friend, and they've asked us questions about the Bible. And these are the kind of questions that we don't have a good answer to. I, I don't know how to answer that question. And what happens was a faith that we were once convinced of, now we're in a place of, of doubt. Man, I, I don't know how to answer that. And instead of asking or, or reaching out to someone of how to find the answer, I, I'm just going to close the book. Some of us close the book because of complacency. Right, right, Graham, 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 you don't understand, like, I got the job, I got the overtime, I got the school, after school programs, I got volleyball practice, I, I got all this stuff in my life, I got the baby on the hip, like, like I know this book is important, but I, I just don't have, like, the time, like, like, if I had more time, I totally invest, but, but I just don't have the time, we, we get complacent, and then some of us close the book because we've been convicted, Right? We, we've listened to a sermon or, or we've read something in this book and, man, that's not how I want to live my life. Like, like the Bible says I'm supposed to forgive everyone? Man, man, you don't know what that person did to me. And God, I know you call me to forgive everyone, but, but I'm not ready to deal with that level of conviction. So I'm going to close the book. Church, here's the reality. The Bible was given to us as a gift. So when we're in a place of saying like, like, yes, I want to discover more. I want to experience more. I want to be equipped for God's purposes for my life. I want to be a part of this under construction process of becoming more like Jesus, but we do it without the Bible. We struggle, we flounder, and we fail. It's the same process of like when you think of a carpenter, right? Um, when you're a master carpenter, if you were going to build a big, complex house, you wouldn't do it without the blueprints, right? Right? If you hired a contractor who's like, I'm ready to build, and we're just going to do it by memory, right? It's good. You're like, I don't want that guy. <laughs> well, the same thing happens with our spiritual and our Christian life. God has given us a blueprint of how we're supposed to do this thing, and we need to reference it. The Bible is a gift given to us. It's a gift for us to discover who he is. It's a gift for us to discover the love he has for us and, and forgiveness and redemption and all of these powerful truths for you and I to live out this process of becoming more like Jesus in order for us to be equipped for the work that God has to us. So here's the, the big idea for the passage that we're going to be studying. The big idea is this, is to be fully equipped for the work of God we need to be fully engaged in the word of God. Amen. To be fully equipped for the work of God, we need to be fully engaged in the word of God. And here's my hope as, as we read the passage we're going to be studying today. Here's, here's my hope that, I, that you get from this is that when we are faithful to the instruction of scripture, God is faithful to the process of you and I becoming more like Jesus. When we are faithful to scripture, God is faithful to the process. So we're going to be in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Don't worry, it's going to be up on the screen. And what Paul is doing is Paul is continuing to write this letter to Timothy. Paul is on his deathbed, right? Paul is in a jail cell. He knows he's on death row. He doesn't have a lot of time left. And Timothy is his, his mentee, his spiritual son. And Paul's talking to Timothy of like, I'm not going to be here much longer. You have to know some critical truths if you're going to do this. And, and Paul and Timothy have just gotten out of some really rough times. They were dealing with some struggles and, and they were dealing with false teachers. And, and Paul was saying to Timothy, listen, 
If you're going to do this, you need to continue on in what you are convinced of, which is your faith in Jesus Christ. And then Paul goes on to say some reasons why this book isn't like any ordinary book. But this book is the word of God. And we're going to discover its source and its purpose for our life. So we're going to be, again, chapter 3, we're going to start in verse 14. And uh, we're gonna, what we're going to do this week is we're going to read the entire passage that we're going to be studying, and then we're going to break it down. So let's jump into verse 14. It says this, But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Verse 16, all scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. To be fully equipped for the work of God, we need to be fully engaged in the word of God. If you're in a place right now where you're like, yes, I am ready to take my construction process seriously. I'm at a place where I want to become more like Jesus. I'm ready, I'm ready to mature my faith. I want more of what Jesus has for me. We need to be engaged in God's word. Now, in the passage we're studying, I believe Paul gives us three critical reasons on why we should engage scripture. You see, this book, this Bible, is not about gathering information. It's not just about consuming information. Yes, that happens, right? It's history, it's truth, it's study, it's all these things. But what this book is about is about life transformation. That when we dive into this book, it doesn't just leave us where we are, but it takes us on a journey to you and I becoming more like Jesus. So the first reason that we see is this. Why do we engage the word of God? We fully engage because it gives us Jesus. We fully engage in the word of God because it gives us Jesus. We again read in verse 14 and 15. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you have learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. We engage the word of God because it gives us Jesus. Without God's word, we would not have the knowledge and the experience of Jesus Christ. That we learn that before God, before Christ, that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But, but here's the hope. That God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus, that whoever believes in him and, and calls him Lord and Savior will not die, but experience eternal life. That is the hope of Jesus. That is the hope that we experience when we engage this book, because it isn't like any other book. It gives us Jesus. We engage the word of God. We get to sit under its teaching, because when we, when we sit down and we read this book and we, we discover Jesus, we get to sit at the feet of Jesus. We get to sit at the feet of Jesus and let his words pour over us of, of the hope and the love and the forgiveness that he offers. That is a beautiful, beautiful picture. You see, if we want to become more like Jesus, we have to spend time with Jesus. When I was thinking about like, okay, how do I, how do I talk about my own personal experience with, with this book? Well, the reality is that I've probably like many of you have had my ups and downs, right? There have been seasons in my life where I've been fully engaged in this book, and then there's been moments of my life where I've probably put this Bible on a bookshelf of my life, and, and I let it collect a little too much dust that I'm proud to admit. But as I've been maturing in my own faith, what God has done in my life is I no longer engage this book because I have to, Oh, the church is telling me, read your Bible again. No, no, no. I read this book because I get to. Because I've come to a place in my life where I know I can't do this life on my own. I can't do it. That I get to a place where now I go to this book and God, I need to experience your grace and your faith and your hope. God, God, let me know. 
I come to a place where I'm dealing with fear. I'm dealing with anxiety. God, God, what is the truth that you can engage me today that's going to help me process this moment? I engage this book because it gives me Jesus. This is no longer a have to. This is a get to moment. In order for you and I to become more like Jesus, we need to spend time with Jesus. Now, the second reason that I believe Paul gives us of the why we engage the word of God is this. Um, We engage because it's God breathed. We engage because it's God breathed. Verse 16, the first half reads like this. All scripture is breathed out by God. Church, this is one of those little itty bitty parts of a verse that when we're reading the Bible, we tend to just like, oh, okay, okay, okay. No, but when we pause and and meditate on what this is saying, church, this is a powerful, powerful truth that the Bible is the word of God because it's the breath of God. When I was thinking about how do I illustrate this, um, you know, I have one of those minds and, and, and uh, I just kept thinking about this scene from an old TV show called Seinfeld. Some of you may know, if you're probably under 30, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But there's a show called Seinfeld, and in Seinfeld, there was a character famous as called a close talker. So I want to check you, let's check out the scene. So Elaine, you don't have a problem with her, do you? We adore Elaine. She wants to say hi, she's with her new boyfriend. What's he like? He's nice, bit of a close talker. A what? You'll see. This is Aaron. Hello, Aaron. Hello, Hello, Aaron. Aaron. So how long are you folks in town? (laughs) Three more days. Three more days and then we're off to Paris. Ah, We're going with the select charter group. I love France. I was just there last year. In fact, (laughs) you know, I still have an envelope full of French francs. I'll give them to you. How'd you like a behind the scenes tour? Really? You could do that? Easily. It wouldn't be any trouble? Of course not. When can we go? How about right now? I'm ready. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, let me get my coat. Elaine, what do you say? Well, well, I don't think so, Aaron. Uh, I have plans. Oh. How about you, Jerry? (laughs) I'm sorry. You sure? You can examine the artwork up close. Maybe I'll try and catch up with you. Okay. Now, I just need to say, like, when I watch this, I'm, like, cringing, right? If you are the person that does that, please stop, please. Um, One of the things, and please understand the context of the statement, one of the things I've loved about COVID is this new six feet rule, right? Like, I have a personal bubble, and when you enter it, it's never good. And even worse than that, if you enter it and I can feel your breath, bro, you need to back off. But I, when I was thinking about it, here's the picture. Feeling someone's breath assumes proximity. Feeling someone's breath assumes proximity. And when we're studying the scripture and we see that, man, the God of the universe God Almighty was was so close to the 40 men who who helped write this book that over the course of 1,500 years that that God was in so close proximity to them that they felt the breath of God. Church, if, if that doesn't bring you chills, if that doesn't make you think that when we're engaging this book, we're engaging the breath of God. Church, that is a powerful, powerful truth. And if that's true, it means a couple different things. Um, Number one, it means that all scripture is breathed out by God. What that means is I can't say, well, I like the New Testament, but I don't really like the Old Testament. Or or I like these verses, but these verses I don't really get into. No, 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 no. That if we're followers of Jesus, and, and this is truly the breath of God, and this is God's word, that means all scripture It's the word of God. The second ramification is this, is if this is God's word, all of it, that means that this is our authority as children of God. If this is the word of God, then then this is our bedrock of truth. When we think about our faith and we think of our our relationship with Christ, 
this book becomes the foundation for our faith. As, as followers of Christ, we love scripture because it comes out of an overflow of the one who spoke it. We, we engage this book not because we have to, but because we love the God who saved us and rescued us and redeemed us and forgave us. And I'm going to read this book because I love him so much. I want to engage his word. I can't do this on my own. And I need to spend time at the feet of my king in order to engage the word of God. Now, here's a truth that as a pastor, I don't think I'm allowed to share with you. Uh, but but here's, here's some truth. As a Christian and to get saved and to live this life, you don't need the word of God. Like you can, you know, be a Christian and you can hear a message and understand the truth and continue on in living your life. You don't need the Bible. Just like during the early church, the, 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 they didn't have the New Testament. They just experienced the life of Jesus and, and were able to experience and get saved. But, but here's the reality. If this is God's word, and this is a gift given to us by God, the question has to be asked of why wouldn't we engage it? If this is God's word, yes, we don't have to read it, but we get to read it. Amen. It's God's breathing. It's been a gift given to us in order for us to live a life that is glorifying to God. We fully engage the word of God because it's God breathed. The final reason I think Paul gives us in this passage of, of why we fully engage this book is because it's totally sufficient. It's totally sufficient. We finish up reading and it says, and is profitable, talking about God's word, for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete and equipped for every good work. When we think about this process of you and I being under construction, when we think about this process of our sanctification, the process of you and I becoming more like Jesus, this Bible, this book, this book that isn't like any other book has everything we need in order to live a life that is glorifying to God and live a life, the Christian life. Um, I know that a lot of you are getting a little itchy, right? We haven't traveled in a bunch. And when I talk to a lot of you, your favorite kind of travel is going to an all-inclusive resort, right? I've never been to an all-inclusive, but here's what I get told. Um, like, if you want to experience the ultimate level of rest, you go to an all-inclusive because everything is taken care of you, right? Your food, your travel, the activities, it's like, it's all there. It's totally sufficient. Now, in my house, we're like a Disney kind of family. Um, I'm not really a super Disney fan. Like, I can appreciate Disney, but my wife loves, loves Disney. <laughs> and it's so much so like this. You know when you're in the house and you can feel the mood start to shift and it's getting a little heavy and dark? I know that if I throw on Moana in the house, man, the house is going to turn into a sing-along. It's going to be high, like, I am Moana. Like, it's going to be a great time. Well, that's the same thing, and that's why I love Heather. But a few years ago, we went to Disney. And here's what I loved about Disney. Again, not a super Disney fan, but like when you book the Disney trip, like you get on the plane, and, and all of a sudden, you know you're in a different zone. All the kids got their shirts on. There's Mickey ears. And then you get off the plane, and there's a Disney bus that just comes and picks you up. And they take your luggage, and they bring it away. And then you go to the park, and you scan your little thing, and they bring you food. Like everything is taken care of you in order for you to have a restful experience. And the same thing happens when we think about and we understand the Bible. That in this book, when we're trying to live out this Christian life, when we're trying to become more like Jesus, the Bible is totally sufficient. It has everything we need in order for you and I to live out this under construction process. And Paul outlines a few things of, well, okay, well, what does it do? Um, number one, he says, teaching. And what teaching is, is it's giving us the resources for you and I to grow in maturity. God, what are the things in my life that I need to grow in to become more like your son? It helps us grow. Then it uses this word called reproof. 
Here's what reproof means. It simply means conviction. That when I read this book, it says, oh, it, do, it says like I shouldn't be doing that. Like, like I need to be, be a forgiving person. I, I need to like be joyful and, 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 I, and I'm going the wrong direction. And what reproof says is like, hey, you're going the wrong direction. It's time to repent and go a different direction. Then it brings up um, correction. Here's what correction means. Well, not only is it gonna point you in the, you say you're going the wrong direction, it's gonna point you to go the right direction. Here's the way you're supposed to go. You're unforgiving, you need to become forgiving. And then lastly, it says training in righteousness. And when you look at the, the kind of the translation of the word, it gives you this picture of a parent guiding a child. And that's beautiful because not only does it kind of slap you upside the head and, and point you in the direction, but but the word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit guides us along in our process into becoming more like Jesus. When we dive into the word of God and study the word of God and meditate on the word of God and allow the word of God to filter in and through our life, it gives us every tool we need in order to be more like Jesus. Now, here's the deal. Um, the Bible is good, but if all you do, if all you do is read the Bible, yeah, 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 no, 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 I like study it all the time, and like I've downloaded, you don't know how many Bible reading plans I've been through on the Bible app, and I go to Bible study after Bible study, and life group after life group, and sermon after sermon, and I'm just consuming the Word of God, but I've never transitioned that to producing, then we're missing the point of the Word of God. It finishes up in this verse of saying that the man of God may be complete and equipped for every good work. We engage this book not to just be consumers. We engage this book not to just feed off of it, but we engage this book to be put on mission. That we are the hands and feet of Jesus and God has given us a purpose and a mission and a calling. So when we engage this book, it should produce in us action. The brother of Jesus, James, said this is, not only do we need to be hearers of the word, but we also need to be doers of the word as well. To be fully equipped for the work of God, we need to be fully engaged in the word of God. In this passage, Paul is talking to Timothy. Timothy, you need to be engaged in God's word. Times are going to be tough. You're going to need to discover your purpose, and you're going to be, need to be encouraged. You're going to need all the tools you need to be on mission for me. And without direction and without guidance, with the Bible in our lives, we're never going to get to a place, a true place, where we're living on mission for him and equipped for every good work. Uh, at Wellspring, we have this value, this discipleship value, this endless growth value called engage with God. And I want to read to you what we mean by this when we say engage with God. It says this, engaging with God is building spiritual habits that followers of Jesus use to strengthen the relationship with God. To know God, we need to engage with God, developing spiritual habits like prayer, worship, and Bible reading will transform us into being more like Jesus. Church, prayer is great. When I talk to someone of like, hey, how are you and Jesus doing? The number one thing I hear is like, oh, I pray all the time. That's good. And worship is great, right? Worship comes out of an overflow of what Christ has done for us and out of adoration. Worship is an amazing thing. But the chief way that God changes us, the chief way that God transforms us is through his word. It's where it's the place we find Jesus. It's the place that we find the blueprint of how to live this Christian life. It's the place when we're struggling with fear and hurt and anxiety. We go to this book to find the answer. It's the place we find joy and how to live in struggle and to be experience joy through those struggles. This book, this Bible, that's not like any other book, is the place where we meet and discover how to be on mission for God. Because to be fully equipped for the work of God. We need to be fully engaged in the word of God. So here's my challenge for you all today. If we're going to be honest, the reality is that the Bible is a big, complex book. Like we've read it, we've engaged with it, but it can be confusing. I mean, it can be confusing. I'm with you. But we don't want to stay there. We, we don't want to remain in a place where we're just going to be like, I'm confused, I'm going to put it away. Or, 
So here's my challenge. I want you to spend seven days, the next seven days, in a plan called The Bible Explained. And here's what this reading plan is going to do. It's going to show you through the Bible the why of the Bible. Why do we engage? It's going to show you how the Bible was written. You probably have all had questions of like, how did this thing even come into existence? It's going to walk you through that. It's going to walk you through step by step of how you engage Scripture. So if you've ever had those questions, I highly encourage you to take hold of this plan and walk through it for seven days. So if you're watching online, there will be a link. And if you're in the room, on your way out, right on the wall, you'll see a big QR code. You can go up to that, scan it with your phone, and it's going to put the the Bible reading plan right on your phone. It's a great way for you this week to engage with the Word of God. Church, I want to encourage you. This life is not easy. Not this construction process it is not easy. And when we think about doing this, we need the tools that God has for us. And last week we learned about, okay, we don't want to stay in our mess, but we want to experience more. We want to experience God's best. But when we do that without engaging the word of God, the source of God's word, the source of God's breath in our life, church, we need to be men and women that are fully engaging this book every single day. Because we don't want to stay average, right? A lot of Christians are are average. We don't want to be Christians that are just kind of making it, surviving. No, no. We want to be in Christians empowered. We want to be in Christians that are on mission. We want to, we want to be Christians that are changing our kids' lives and changing the lives of our families and changing the lives of our friends and our, our workplaces and our community. When we think about our mission that we exist to ignite a craving for Jesus by relentlessly loving our community, when we do that void of God's word, we'll never be fully equipped to be fully on mission for God. So church, this week, take that challenge. And if you have your own reading plan, your own devos, praise God. But if you don't, church, we want to, we're done with average. We want to be on mission for God. We we want to become more like Jesus. And God has given us everything we need through his word to become more like his son. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that you love us. I thank you that you did not leave us alone, God. God, I thank you that through your word, you speak to us through your Holy Spirit and you engage us. And God, I thank you, you've given us everything we need in order to live a life glorifying to you. So God, I pray right now, if someone's in this room or watching online and they're struggling, they're wrestling, and they're at a place where they're, they're ready to go deeper and they're ready to drive deeper and they're ready to experience more of you and they're ready to become like your son, God, I pray that they don't leave this room the same way they walked in that you start flaming a fire in their soul up. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to help lead my family. I'm ready to be a testimony in my job. I'm, I'm ready to be a, an example to my friends at school, God. God, I'm ready for more. And this week, would we engage your word? Would we sit at your feet through study and would we have your words pour over us? God, we want more. God, we're tired of average. God, we want to be on mission for you. God, give us faith in your holy name.